Hey everybody, today I'll be talking about the foreign function interface that you can now use from CBQN. So the first thing I want to show off from the CBQN FFI is how CBQN will do some unwrapping of arguments for you. So here in this case, we are taking and returning a 32-bit integer and just returning one plus whatever was passed to us. And CBQN has some language around how you import a foreign function interface function um, that tells CBQN that it should unwrap a BQN value into some C type value. So let me show you how that works. Now, if we look at the symbols of lib.so, we can see that our add one symbol is defined and this is what we're gonna import into BQN. Now the syntax for loading a function in from a dynamic library is uh, on the left of this FFI built-in, we'll pass the name of the library that we're loading. And then on the right, we'll pass something that looks like a function declaration in C or C++. Um, so we'll give it the return value, the function name, and any arguments using a syntax you can look up in the documentation. In this case, we are returning an i32. Our function is called add1. And we take an i32 as an argument. So now if we invoke this function, it'll call out to our dynamic library and execute whatever code we threw in there. The next thing I want to show off from FFI is a header that CBQN provides to us. It gives us some really nice helper functions to use when we're interacting with a BQN value. So now instead of taking an i32 and returning an i32, we're actually going to take a BQN B as both our argument and as the return value. And this is defined in a header that you can find in the CBQN repository, BQN FFI. Now I have CBQN cloned in the in the parent directory, so I'm just going to use this as a shortcut for now. But now we can use some really interesting functions to interrogate what type we're actually working with. So we, you know, there's a, there's a function in BQN FFI.h that lets you query the type of the argument or get the bounds of an array if you pass it an array. Um, all kinds of interesting things. In this case, we're going to get the bounds of our argument and we're going to assume it's an array, and we're going to create in another array, array with one added to every value. So now in this case, when we load our function from the library, we're going to use some different syntax. Um, earlier when we loaded the library, we told BQN that we were loading an i32 and we were taking an i32. And in this case, BQN looked at whatever inputs were given to it and extracted an i32 from it before calling into our library. In this case, since we're using uh, CBQN's header, we're actually going to take in any arbitrary BQN value and just assume that it's going to be an array because we're using a bit of a contrived example here. But whenever you take in an arbitrary BQN value, you just use A as the data type there. So in this case, we are taking and returning just an arbitrary BQN value. So now we're going to load our function from the dynamic library. We take and return an arbitrary BQN value, and then we're going to call it on an array from 0 to 9. And if we run that, you can see we then get an array from 0 to 10. Just to prove to you, this is what we passed our function, and this is what our function gave back. Now, in this last example, I'm going to do exactly what we did before, but I'm just going to do it with CUDA because I think it's really cool that we can now use CUDA directly in CBQN. So I'm going to pull up the exact same source that we had before, and I'm going to include some other headers. Now, before, we were just iterating over the values that we loaded in from BQN. Um, but in this case, I'm going to use the thrust parallel algorithms to launch a device kernel to do exactly the same thing, but on the device instead. This line here is going to copy all the data from the host onto the device. Down here on line 18, we're going to copy the data from the device back to the host and return exactly what we did before. This is going to take all the data in our host vector here and create a BQN array out of it and return it back into the BQN context. So let's build this and test it out.
Now when we run that exact same function in BQN, it should do exactly the same thing, except this time it's going to run on the GPU. And look at that. We get the same, the same exact stuff, except this time it is running on a GPU. This is a big part of why I'm so excited about FFI coming to CBQN. I mean, it opens up the possibility to using any libraries written in C, C++, or Fortran, essentially. And I don't know of any other way in APL to write code to run on a GPU. And so I'm just really excited about the possibilities of this. I'm really excited to see what people come up with. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.